Hey guys, it's Tarek with Cyclone FPV, and this little video is going to explain to you on uh, how to connect the um, Racer Star, the F4 S board, the Olin One board here. Let me see if I get that on there right there. Um, how to connect it in Betaflight and configure it. And I'm putting this on our forum on our page for uh, flight controllers under the Racer Star F4 S. So uh, I'm going to turn the screen around now and show you guys exactly how I do it. Um, okay, so the first thing is I talked to you about doing a firmware update, so we're going to cover that real quick. Um, under the firmware flasher, now this is uh, where you want to make sure you've got it set. So under firmware flasher, um, on my instructions, uh, actually I'm going to go ahead and connect to the board because on the instructions I gave you, it was very specific. I'm not going to worry about this right now. I'm going to go to my CLI. The first thing I said was you needed to make sure to click version. Um, I want to make sure that you see this. So it's the Omnibus F4, right? And so you want to make sure that you select that on your options. I always think this is a good habit to get into doing version check just before you uh, do the uh, flash. So um, once you do that, you can go ahead and click disconnect. We know it. So then you're going to go to firmware flasher and you're going to find Omnibus, right? So Omnibus F4. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and flash it with um, the newest version right here and you're going to leave everything else like it is. So go ahead and click the download and then click flash firmware. And at that point your board's going to go into DFU mode and it's going to automatically flash. Do not change any of these settings here or else you'll run into problems. Um, or you could run into problems. So we're going to watch this flash real quick. It should be done here in just a second. And then I'm going to show you the steps on configuring. Now the steps I'm going to show you are basic steps. They're not going to be like whether you want your buzzers to be working at certain points or anything else. Um, just some of the some of the simple features that I know that I set by default when I'm doing a client's uh, quad. All right, so it says it's done, programming successful. So once you do that, go ahead and click connect. And um, I always get in the habit of resetting this. However, this is not on a quad right now, so it's just sitting on my desk, so it's not going to really level out properly. But uh, here we go. So the first thing we want to do is if you're setting this up using, let's say, a FrySky XSR X4R, and you're going to be using telemetry and SBUS. Uh, this is what you're going to want to make sure of based on the instructions I gave. Um, first thing is when you go into your ports, you're going to make sure to turn on your Serial RX for your um, uh, U UART1. Okay, and uh, that is going to coincide with the S bus connection on the top of the board, which is in my diagram. The next thing you're going to do if you're using telemetry, uh, remember on my diagram it says you need to bridge the connection to the um, uh, telemetry hack on the XSR. I'm referring to the XSR now, but the X4R, I believe. Uh, has the same hack. Um, I've got a video on that, but anyway, so you're going to make sure to come over here to UART 6 and you're going to select Smart Port. These are the two things you must have set, especially if you're using an XSR with telemetry and you want an S bus. So go ahead and click Save. It's going to um, uh, save the configuration. Then you're going to go get and connect again. Now, when you go to Ports, you're going to see it's automatically set. Do not adjust anything else on here, not for what I'm going over. Then you're going to go to Configuration. Now, this uh, uh, um, sorry, the Racer Star F4 does support um, DSHOT 600, which is what we're going to select here. So go ahead and select DSHOT 600, leave your defaults the same. Uh, we don't need barometer, um, and I don't even believe it's supported on this board. I do tend to drop the um, frequencies down to 4 and 4, uh, and uh, I, have, I have enjoyed very good flight with that. Everything else here I'm leaving the same. Uh, you can type in your craft name here, so I'm going to put Cyclone uh, FPV Diablo. That'll be what this uh, board's going to go into. Now, here's where it's critical. If you're using SBUS, you need to make sure to select the serial-based receiver here, and then you're going to select SBUS here. Make sure you do both of those. At that point, before I do anything else, I would click Save. All right, we want to go ahead and make sure that we get each change saved, especially the critical ones. Okay, so now you connect, right, and everything's back to normal. So you know you've already done your ports, um, and so here all your ports are still the same. Your con configuration should show DSHOT 600. Everything here is set the way I did it. The name is on there, and we have S bus. Now, for your, t for your telemetry, this board does not have onboard OSD, so we're going to turn that off, but we are going to turn on telemetry. Um, and then if you like, you can have dynamic filter, uh, anti-gravity, and if you want all-time air mode or not, that's up to you. Uh, I have air mode and anti-gravity done in my um, um, uh, mode settings, which is over here on the left. Uh, so for right now, because I'm just covering the telemetry, this is what we're going to do. Make sure to turn on telemetry. I don't like beepers, I, they kind of bother me after a while, so usually I'll turn them all off, but you do whatever you want. I'm going to go ahead and click save again, and now what we've got, um, we're going to go ahead and click. Okay, so now we're in, there's my stuff, and so we have the ports set, configuration, 
Again, I know I go over everything the same thing. Everything is said here. S bus is always there. Telemetry set. So this is all we're working on right now. Uh, power and battery don't matter. It, really nothing else at this point is going to matter. Um, except that if you want to use telemetry, don't forget that you need to go to your CLI and you need to type the following. Set TLM underscore inverted equals on. Okay, and it's going to say telemetry invert set to on, then click save. This is going to go ahead and invert your telemetry signal properly for the um, FireSky to be able to uh, uh, recognize the um, data. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and let me see if I can get this to react a little bit faster. Uh, let's see, connect. Okay, so we're in now, and you will see now that everything is set. I do not have a LiPo or anything to connect to this board, but these are the steps that I'm going over with you. Um, and I want to make sure that you understood. It does seem to take a little while to reboot it. Um, and uh, from here, what you'll do is make sure that if you're flying a standard, uh, a standard um, receiver transmitter, so like the, let's say the uh, Tyrannus, you're going to want to make sure to select the spectrum option and have this channel mapping. The reason being, if you don't, once it binds to your um, uh, transmitter, this quad's going to be spinning all over the place if you have not selected this one, which is fine. You'll just change it. Um, I usually make sure you have your thresholds, move your controllers, uh, um, move your sticks uh, left, right, up, down 100% and all the way down. Make sure that you're in the range of 1000 and 2000. Um, so if you are, then we're going to put a low stick threshold of 1005. This is the area to where you can still arm the quad and we're going to up this to 2000, although some people say that it doesn't matter. I just do it out of habit. Go ahead and click save again. And now your connections are finished here. Under modes, um, you're going to want to add your range for arming. So um, most people will have their switches set auxiliary one, for example. Just remember that um, for something like arming, this is going to be your uh, disarmed uh, range here. So if you have like auxiliary one, it's a three-way switch. So you have uh, the switch all the way up, like pushed away from you. Uh, that's going to be this range here, and that'll be disarmed. Uh, then middle range is here. And uh, when the switch is pulled all the way down towards you, then it's going to be here. I select this entire range just in case um, I hit the switch going down and I push it too far from middle to the end. Uh, I don't have a dead zone here. So I recommend that you have your switch cover the full way. The same thing would go for like, let's say, horizon mode. So let's say you're using auxiliary two um, and it's a three-way switch, however you have it programmed. So what will happen is if I, this area here will mean you're in acro mode. So if you have it pushed all the way up or off, you're in acro mode, and then here is uh, would cover the range of auxiliary or a uh, horizontal uh, horizon mode. Sorry. Um, again, if you leave a dead zone and you leave this like right here, when this switch, if you accidentally push it to here, you will force yourself back into acro mode accidentally. So I say for safety, keep your um, keep your switches, keep your range covered as far as you can. Uh, anti gravity. So for example, if you wanted to run, uh, let's say air mode. Uh, here's air mode for example, okay? So if you wanted to run horizon mode and anti-gravity, then you would say, okay, if I want horizon and anti-gravity, I'm gonna leave my switch here. Um, and what'll happen is if you flip your, uh, your toggle switch to the middle, you're just gonna have horizon. If you switch it all the way, you're gonna have horizon and anti-gravity. So uh, that's how you can use, get two features on one switch and you would make sure to select the same auxiliary uh, output. Now, on the same token, if you're an acro flyer, then this is gonna be somewhat limited, okay? And you may want anti-gravity to be here and you may want air mode. So if you want air mode, you're gonna set it for auxiliary two as well and you can say, okay, I want uh, air mode uh, and anti-gravity all the way at the end so which, which, uh, sorry, which would be uh, right here. Okay, so now what, here's what happens. If you look at this properly, it says, okay, if I have my auxiliary to switch all the way down to zero, then I'm only in, uh, everything here would be off. So horizon's off, anti-gravity is off, and air mode's off, all right? And so that would just give you acro, uh, acro mode only. If I want, if you say, okay, now in middle position, I'm gonna have everything that's in middle position active, which means I'm gonna have Acro mode, uh, anti-gravity mode, and air mode all on at the same time, all right? And then if you flip over all the way up, then you would be in horizon mode because you're I'm going to be here, and you'd have anti-gravity but no air mode. So you could play with this how you want. You could set a different auxiliary switch for air mode. You can have all-time air mode, all-time anti-gravity. I'm going to save this just so I can show you the screen. 
You could have all time air mode, all time anti gravity, and not have to worry about changing them by coming here and turning on air mode and anti gravity. Once you do this, this is all time, it means you don't have to change it in your, um, in your settings. So I'll save that as well just to show you. All right, so that is basically how you get this board started. Um, and uh, again, it's rebooting right now, so this is gonna, this is gonna take a minute. Let me make sure it reboots. But um, let me flip the screen around. Okay, so that's basically how you're gonna set this up. And I, I try to go through it pretty fast. You can slow down and, or you can just uh, post a question for me on the forum. Uh, again, it's cyclonefpv.com and you go to our CFPV forums, link at the top of the page. Um, another service we do offer, it's a no charge service um, as we you know, start developing and getting our name out there, is on our website, uh, if I turn this around here, let me see if I can open the website real quick. Uh, let me see, let me go ahead and minimize this. And let me go to my website here. Okay, so on the, um, I'm right here I'm setting up the, uh, let me go here. All right, so I'm getting some links for people so they can attach to their um, port drivers. But on our website here, if you get to the website, uh, you're gonna see this option for CF, CPV uh, form. It should say CFPV, I have to change that, that's a typo. Um, and then when you go down here, you're gonna see things like flight controllers and some help, how to install beta flight uh, and so forth. Um, and so uh, you can come here and you can see things uh, like this discussion, for example, would be in the Racer Star F4S. Um, but one thing that we do offer is this remote support feature. Uh, and on the remote support feature, which we've already used and it's been done real well, this is the old clean flight picture. Um, basically, you'll set up a session, you'll contact me and I'll set up a session with you. You'll put in your name and a nine digit number. When you click connect, you'll basically be giving us remote access to your computer to set this up for you. Now, for those of you that are concerned about, oh, I don't want somebody in my computer, well, we can't do anything if you don't give us permission. And, and look, I, I'm an IT, I'm a director of IT for a rather large medical company, uh, and I'm in charge of a ton of very sensitive um, um, HIPAA, HIPAA guideline the patient information uh, data. So point being is, is I take the job seriously and I offer this feature to everybody um, as a way to help you. I, I, if I wasn't in IT the way I am, been in it for 35 years, if I wasn't in it, uh, I would have a hard time doing some of the things that were uh, set to be done with these controllers and loading software, etc. So I offer this feature just to help you out and also introduce our company to you. Um, but when I'm in your computer, for example, you're sitting right there. You're watching it happen and you can disconnect the session anytime. Once I'm out, I can't get back in. So um, it's very protected and I mean, I've got my name on the line here. I'm not gonna sit there and do anything bad for you. I am gonna help you as much as I can so you can get your flight controller to go into DFU mode so you can get your updates done, basically so we can get you on the right path. And then, you know, hopefully down the road you come to Cyclone FPV for some parts or some other assistance or excuse me, or something else. So please use that feature uh, if you feel like you need help. It's very fast. You need to have high speed um, and, uh, and that's pretty much about it. And the support is for both Mac and PC. So getting back to our beta flight here, let me um, switch back over, okay, and maximize this. Okay, so once you connect, uh, let me go ahead and, sorry, my port is incorrect here. So let me go ahead and connect here and connect. Okay, so what you're gonna see now is everything is set up like normal. Um, so we have our configuration, we have our CPU load is very good, um, and that's pretty much about it for the basics of getting your board configured uh, with your FrySky receiver or just getting it set up in general with SBUS and so forth. Um, if you have any questions, guys, please give me a, please uh, either post it to my forum or shoot me an email at uh, cyclonefpv.com. You can find our contact form there and uh, check out our other videos. I'd appreciate your support, so please subscribe to our YouTube, YouTube channel if you can. There's a link at the top of our uh, webpage for that as well. Um, and that's about it, guys. I've got my shop behind me getting ready to uh, cut some carbon fiber, and uh, I've got to get to work. So I appreciate your time, and if there's anything else you need, I'll talk to you then. Take care. Bye.